let's talk about Riemann tensor. Now Riemann tensor is something which is um, syn sort of synonymous to general relativity or actually Riemann uh, surfaces or Riemann manifolds um, because um, uh, Riemann manifolds have the property that they are locally flat, a requirement of general relativity. Um, but uh, let's not worry about that right now. Right now let's see how this shows up. Well, uh, we'll talk in terms of um, the same way in which Riemann actually, Riemann wasn't really talking about Riemann tensor, but he was actually more interested in the problem of how to really address curvature. And this was uh, his idea, and which actually was very simple, which ended up um, in a complex tensor called Riemann tensor. But let's talk about the idea itself. Um, but before that, let, give, let me give you a more basic thing. Well, in and two-dimensional problem, if you want to calculate the radius of curvature of a um, curve, you just find this thing, ds over dt. That is, if you move this small distance ds along the curve, how much the, the tangent changes? So let me just exaggerate it. Let me exaggerate it. Where d is really small, but I am exaggerating it. So this is uh, t2, and this is t1. I'm just labeling it. So t2 minus t1 divided by delta s or ds uh, in this case. This is how uh, curvature is uh, calculated in um, uh, two-dimensional space, um, the radius of curvature. Similarly, Rie Riemann's idea was uh, we, um, the following: if you start from a point p prime, you travel distance ds, and then further you travel distance d lambda, and you reach a point q. Now what you do is instead of traveling ds first, you actually, this is lambda, you actually travel d lambda first, and then travel ds while in between you go to q prime and these are two different paths. Now if you go through this you will see what I mean by traveling is that you, you parallel transport a vector a. It's not really parallel to the plane defined by pq so just ram some random vector you parallel transport it like here or you parallel transport it using different path. Here in when you reach from p prime to q, um, the vector a after parallel transporting will not stay the same. Instead, uh, it, the, the final vectors from the two paths will be different uh, and we can calculate this. Let's say your vector is a alpha. So from going from p prime to q prime, just using the equation parallel transport, this is the equation. And further from going from q prime uh, to q, we will simply um, actually um, so we are going from q prime to q further the final vector will actually be a alpha minus now these are Christopher Kofish Christopher symbols p prime a beta d lambda minus alpha sigma nu now I haven't memorized this, I'm just written this on a sheet of paper, uh, but it's not really a problem. You can always memorize this equation. 
can be to mu p prime a beta d lambda ds. Okay, so from here to here, this is your final vector. Also, let's go the other way around. If you go the other way around, then um, at q prime, that is going from p prime to actually this was p prime to q prime and then q prime to q and this one is p prime to p. If you do that you get alpha sigma nu q prime uh, well actually what I'm trying to do here is that I'm trying to express you see uh, I'm trying to express q prime uh, in terms uh, the reason I'm getting confused is because I haven't labeled p here okay so I want to write everything here in terms uh, in um, terms of p prime which basically mean that this is alpha sigma nu p prime symbol using sort of Taylor series mu p prime d lambda okay so I'm expressing uh, these these values in terms of values at p prime and uh, if we do that what do we get we will get this equation will become it will become a alpha minus alpha beta mu p prime a beta d lambda minus alpha sigma nu q prime uh -huh, I'm again doing a mistake here this will actually be a alpha beta d lambda sigma nu a sigma ds plus alpha sigma nu sigma you can do the calculation along with me if you want to if you think so I'm taking too long d lambda ds minus alpha sigma nu comma beta a sigma d lambda d s okay now everything is actually calculated at p prime the value at p prime whatever these all these crystal symbols are, are actually calculated at p prime now you can do the same thing if you go along this path and you will actually end up with the following equation that following vector this is the end result of the vector after being parallel transported along this path you see just lambda and s get switched okay minus sigma nu comma mu well comma means I'm differentiating with respect to mu I think I haven't explained that but this is actually partial of sigma alpha sigma nu with respect to partial mu okay this is the other vector and now if you find the change if you the final change is going to be this delta a alpha will be minus beta nu uh, actually beta gamma 
new plus alpha beta new mu plus alpha sigma mu sigma beta nu minus alpha sigma nu I think it'll be a good exercise if you do along with me well I'm not doing it I'm just writing it from a piece of paper which I have already recorded but you can try it a beta d lambda ds okay so you see it sums over beats um, I hope I am taking care of all the indices um, beta beta goes away sigma sigma go away well Okay, this is partial, so I'm not should be not be worried about the. I'm sorry. So this is this is a partial. This is actually called the Riemann tensor, and this whole thing can actually be written as. Again, I'm writing it down. And this whole thing can be rewritten as delta a alpha equals r alpha beta mu gamma a beta d lambda ds okay you see um, beta is absorbed here and these mu nu are absorbed by d lambda and ds because they're and then f it, this is eventually this is what you get uh, this is called the Riemann tensor This is Riemann tensor, the whole thing. Now, um, how how come it's a tensor? Let me let me just um, remove everything. How come it's a tensor? Well, it's a tensor because it follow it satisfies the following condition: uh, beta mu nu equals I did not really copy it from a textbook, I just wrote from on my own, so if there are some indices missing, please leave a comment and I'll fix this. Okay, this is how it transforms, uh, which you can actually prove from the following formula, that this is how the Christopher symbols transform. Using this, you can prove that actually it's a tensor because it satisfies this, uh, which basically means uh, if you change the coordinate system, the new components are nothing but the linear combination of the older components, which basically means that it, uh, that is a t it's a, it's an arrow living in some space created by alpha beta mu nu, which be which depends on the physics of the problem and not on the coordinate system. So it's inherent to the geometry of the problem and not uh, on the way you define the coordinate system. In fact, this depends on the on the coordinate system. As you can see, it doesn't really transform like uh, the older, um, the newer um, components are not a linear combination of the older components. So it's not really, I mean, it's, it's not inspired by physics. In fact, based on coordinate system, the the crystal thing with symbols okay um, is there a way to tell if something's a tensor or not I don't know um, 
um, I really don't know if there's a way but because uh, Riemann tensor satisfies this condition we know it's a tensor moreover actually Riemann tensor encodes the geometry of the problem the curvature actually as a matter of fact it's curvature which probably I'll talk about in the next or next or next class next lesson is it encodes the geometry of the problem now can you do a similar kind of thing for a two-dimensional space just to contrast my previous statement I'm raising this question can you do a similar kind of thing let's say for a two-dimensional uh, curve well you cannot do this you cannot have uh, a, a tensor which is which actually depends on the curvature of the uh, curve why because cur um, uh, because um, the 2D curve does not have an inherent geometry so this is an important statement 2D curve does not have an inherent geometry while Riemann surfaces or Riemann manifolds have an inherent geometry and that's why um, you have this Riemann tensor which depends on the geometry of the problem or the curvature of the problem. Uh, I'll talk about maybe the next lesson about the sum of the properties of Riemann tensor.